question. Hello, hello! What's going on, YouTube and fellow BioTubers? It is me, Zach Kaplan, coming at you with another BioTalk live show. I'm here with Captain Geo, Guinness Walker, and of course, BioTube TV. Um, we're going to kind of have a free-for-all kind of talking and chatting about all sorts of things today on this show. I'm thinking we get into just like Guinness wanted to talk about technic and storytelling. I know a big um, topic nowadays is just studio or studio.io, that like program that everyone's been using from what it looks like to build models. You know, it's a lot cheaper than getting the pieces, but there's some problems with it, some negative parts, but some good parts as well. I think we'll go over the whole spectrum of like 3D printing and all these interesting ideas at some point I might even want to share this a couple of these YouTubers I found that do 3D printing pretty well they made like I don't know if you've seen they've done like movie accurate models and it's kind of like uh, definitely a way to model now as far as how the pieces and like how well they're actually produced it's pretty hard to do but it's like 3D printing is kind of taking over so I think it's another good uh, discussion of topic for sure but to um to start it off, this was an idea that Guinness U sent me, which is just overall kind of like the topic of Lego and Lego Technic um, and storytelling within that. I guess if you want to elaborate or go more into kind of what sure. you were thinking of talking about, go for it. Yeah, go right ahead. Sure. Uh, what I was thinking was specifically was um, like I've and I probably said this before on the show, but I uh, you know I grew up with Bionicle as a thing just for me. I didn't have access to all of the media. I didn't know that there was, I had some of the books. I knew there was books. I had the comics through uh, for the brief period that I was, you know, I convinced my parents to have Lego magazine. Yeah. But I, Bionicle was something uh, for me. So uh, I would like, you know, enjoy the Bionicle story. But more than that, I think what I probably got the most use out of my Bionicle parts was making characters from other shows or from other stories, making my own characters and just using them to, you know, weave my own narratives. And I imagine that's something I, whether it's in the Bionicle universe or not, that's definitely something that, you know, lots of people do. And it's like somebody said, you know, uh, when the suggestion was made, oh, well, what about, like, uh, like, is it even appropriate to, to talk about like that? Should we stay, like, in the Bionicle stuff? And it's like, well, there is no, like, limit. You know, Bionicle may have uh, its own story, but more broader than that, Technic and Bionicle is just a great way to, uh, you know, make figures and, and just weave worlds i mean just like you know legos but uh, in a different sort of way right and, and with the way that studio is actually facilitating that in, in different ways uh, is that studio get, like lets you have access to a bunch of, of parts to do digital stuff which is increasingly a way that people love to to tell their stories through you know uh, digital comics or making their own mocks or or whatever it is there's there's just a ton of versatility to technic and to bionicle in terms of telling your own stories so that's kind of where i was thinking about it like you know totally yeah yeah no i like, think uh, it's it's interesting um especially when you aren't like surrounded or have access to all of that you know extra multimedia that like bionicle had to offer um the versatility of this the system alone and allowing it to kind of like stand out from lego especially as a kid with like a growing imagination and all that yeah yeah i hear you there Absolutely. well like it, it ties into uh mocks really strongly right because i mean it's my own creation and i always took that very literally you know um i i would make the occasional toa team but like you know even when i would make um my own bionicle characters because i didn't have the full narrative and because you know you're younger and you don't even if you have the full narrative you probably don't comprehend every aspect of it uh, you would kind of make your own almost parallel universe because you know you fill in details uh, and you, you create your own associations like i remember one of the things i did when i didn't have uh, enough masks is i would just take like uh let me see if, like I would right. take a, a hand piece and I would put it on the mouth and I would like kind of add stuff to the sides or, or like something like that, right? Right. And I would like just come up with like an explanation in my own canon head universe why or what that purpose it served, it served any. You know, and that's, that's a lot of things you see like with people with their own, you know, custom stories and they give their their Toa or, or whatever their, their characters custom traits and, and they, they make them more their own and that's what that's that's what i think is great about bionicle you know right um, bionicle is a story like i said i'm not 
dissing on Bionicle's story. I love the story of Bionicle, but it's also just a great medium for uh, telling stories, particularly uh, for kids. I think it's an absolutely, you know, uh, it's an excellent medium of expression for people who like to build things, people who like to, to construct their own worlds, to construct their own narratives. So. Oh, yeah. No, exactly. Um, uh, Gia, what would you, do you have anything to say? What do you, um, I would think you agree? Dennis summed it up uh, pretty well, actually. Right. Um, like, you can, you can do uh, a lot of stuff with, with the new age stuff nowadays. Like, you can 3D print your own Bionicle parts, considering the, new, the, uh, the older ones have uh, started to get uh, old and brittle. Even, even the newer parts, like all the CCBS stuff here. Like, I have this friction adder, and I've seen pictures of them broken. Right. Like, how does that even happen? They were supposed to be stronger than, than the traditional, like, uh, hand pieces. That was, that was part of the point, mm -hmm. supposedly. Right. Especially, especially more, uh, more resilient than I found. Ones. I found those to be more brittle in my experience. In fact, I know. Maybe, maybe it's not true, but I don't know. At least, like, from, you know, tactile experience, I would physically avoid those. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I had to. But I'm also, like, a very old school. Like, I didn't even have... I stopped collecting sets regularly because, you know, my parents wouldn't get them for me and I didn't have my own income probably around yeah. 2006. I only, the last uh, year that I had, like, I got a set and I was expecting to get all the sets because 2007 I got Pachydox. Uh, I, I think I ended up getting Hydraxon eventually and that's it. I never, I didn't have any 2008 sets because I just, I didn't have access to yeah. I don't know what I the time 2008 sure. 2008 sets were expensive too i mean you're talking 90 dollars yeah, 80 dollars that's another thing so the it was 13 dollars like, for a canister set right and my dad never happened to eight bucks a set you know so it's it became increasingly difficult to convince my parents and then so now my plan is you know as you uh, as i get disposable income you know slowly build up a collection but that's gonna take time yeah yeah i hear you i got, I got <laughs> I have my I have a Toa Kopaka up there somewhere too. Right. I had to get my Toa Mata. That was all I could I could justify for now. They're also pretty cheap still, so that's good. BioTube, what would you say is your kind of two cents on Lego Lego Technic? Its ability outside of even uh, lore and you know all of the multimedia aspects of that Bionicle has to offer, as far as just like a storytelling system, something that you know fits in the realm that almost outside of what Lego you know could accomplish. Well, I think really in 2001, you had a whole world built for you. Um, you had the Toa that came from the canisters. Yeah. You got that. You actually got those. Uh, and you have the Tohunga. You know, they just came in bags and stuff. And then you had the Arahi, you know, those or the animals for the world, you know, the Trago, the elders, you know, Tohunga villagers. Everything is set out there for you, you know? Right. And it's even beyond that. Like, people created their own stories because they were... I had, like, a multitude of friends who weren't even in on the lore too deeply or anything. Weren't even, like... Even, like, aware of all of the intense storytelling that went into Bionicle. And yet, the system, like, Technic, the system that LEGO created there for the longest time acted as... Like you, you would have your ability to kind of create your own stories in a really a broad way because of how like versatile, I guess you could say like the figures were in general and all of that. Um, definitely. Yeah. And I Sorry, think, uh, you... I I think a lot in a lot of ways, um, the uh, the digital spectrum and the three D printed spectrum is is very good for for this community uh, on on previous points like I stated before, but. Uh, like the digital spectrum is so much easier uh, in regards to budget. So like Studio oh, yeah. is a free program and there are free add-ons. So it's infinitely cheaper to just download Studio and create your own mocks than to think... actually buy the pieces. But I can I can totally understand because I was also a physical builder for years before that. Totally. There, there's an appeal to physical. Like I mean, I would love to have all the sets. But there's like, there, there's a real appeal, I think, especially for adult fans uh, of Bionicle who 
grew up with it and maybe you know like specifically there's a lot of people like me who couldn't get all the sets and studio is just great for that now it's not perfect it happens to be perfect for people like me who like like the old stuff because it's got almost all everything up to like 2004 2005 um mm -hmm. but past that it it gets to be a bit, a bit of an issue and that's what you know where studio's biggest uh glaring issue is is missing parts but totally. like one of the things that uh, there's just so many more people nowadays versus 10 20 years ago who like kids especially like learning blender or learning you know like this and that and you can take what you make in studio and literally start animating from that like i i, I started to do that right. so it's great jumping off point and i would be a, i would be surprised if there weren't people in 10 years who trace their you know origin and animation back to them using studio i hear you no i i could almost guarantee that too um studio files studio files are also compatible with blender oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're out of the box they're compatible with blender and they're compatible with more than that actually they're more they're compatible with a lot of 3d programs anything that accepts um what, what is studio out for i'm trying to remember uh i'm pretty sure they're dot io files a lot of is what well, it you can you can actually um it. you can you can export it as a usable file i believe it's uh yeah yeah what, what was it Fucking, uh a lot of. A lot of. Yeah, you can export two programs yeah. actually that will accept that. And even if they won't, okay. you can send it into Blender, and then once you have it in Blender, you can convert it to almost anything else that wants mm -hmm. to use it. So you can effectively get a full three D model of any Bionicle mock, you know, as long as the pieces are in Studio, and make a three D a full three D model of it. That's and even if the really pieces aren't in Studio, there's still a community like yeah, uh, there's still there's a community like every... of people that can create more parts that are missing. And they're always adding like if if you don't find it in a custom pack. You'll probably find it in an update eventually. Like it's, right. I'd say in the next uh, five years, but probably in the next like you know, yeah, yeah, about five years. I'd say Studio will be complete. Yeah. And if you like, I said if you won't, if you don't find it in the program itself, you'll find it in a custom pack. And right. No, I a hundred percent. Um, I wanted to, so I wanted to share this post. Now I know not everyone has like Instagram or whatever. But there's this Instagram artist called Grumble Bricks, and he does a lot of Bionicle. And he basically made this post, and I wanted to like read it aloud for everyone tuning in, because I was like, I thought it was so like well said and well spoken, and it has I shared to do that on my Instagram story. You know, yeah, today. Gio, I saw that on your story, and I was like, oh man, I have to like bring this up and pull this up for uh, BioTalk tomorrow. So here it is. Let me transition. Here it is. So this was um, a post made by Grumblevix on Instagram, and he says, Hashtag Bionicle is such a fascinating intellectual property because it has transcended its original authors and creators. It is now made by fans, reimagined, and rewritten. In the years since its official demise, Bionicle has become a study of the enduring power of creativity. Lore has been altered through new perspectives. Characters have been invented, new loca locations drawn and painted and rendered as games and digital artwork. Bionicle is a story that has outlived itself. The fan fiction outweighs the source material, and I think that's beautiful. At that Grumblebrick. is fucking perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Right? I couldn't have said better. And it's like really interesting. I love this little post. Um that I saw because it kind of sums up like what everyone's doing now. Uh, you know, like in my opinion, it sums up kind of like, and it has a lot to say, honestly, um, on what he's saying. Yeah. The, like the enduring power of like creativity and also something that stands out, something that, you know, is, is tangible and different and like can speak to generations after it's even gone. Like it's not on stores anymore, but you have all these young fans that, uh, are looking into it either because they got into Lego or they got into any other th sort of like system themes and then looked for something more and found out about it and were just intrigued by it. And it's definitely, uh, I love uh, what the guy said. It's pretty great, pretty great post. I'm glad you posted that, Gio. So I like saw it and was like, boom, we got to pull that up. Definitely have something to talk about there. Do we have no, that, any that, renders? Really Do we have me. any, uh, we have any studio renders that, that we can like show to people? Um, like just as an example of what Studio can do as a platform? Yeah, so if you have like the JPEG or PNG or whatever, uh, send it I'll over send to the it voice down. to the voice text, and then I'll download the photo and pull it up so I can like do a little transition and have it fade to the main screen. Put it where? Uh, just in voice text, the uh, okay. streams chat. 
Um, while they're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and read the live chat right now, see what we have coming in. Paraka Avok, hello again, fellow Bionicle nerds. Good to see you. Nicholas uh, Glethal, good to see you. Um, I think you're pretty new from what I remember. I haven't seen you in a lot of these chats, so good to see you. The Man in Black, how's it going? Says, howdy. DXL the Poet, Biotech, 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 let's go. <laughs> DJ Alistair, good to see you. Um, Spo Senju is here, awesome. Great to, great to have you here, man. Kumo Rocks. Um, we also have... Do, 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 do. Yes, well, Senjo, Kumo Rocks. It looks like everyone's, a lot of people are talking about uh, the, like, digital buildings. Kumo Rocks says, um, I tried three digital builders and they all suck. I They all had major annoying problems. Uh, definitely, if you haven't, checked out Studio. It's I think we'll go into more detail talking about it today. Um, no, Kumo Rocks, no idea how people make masterpieces on them. Such a pain making parts lay down. No, I, that's a big thing. My friend Thrawn, uh, who will have on, like, you know, makes like Bionicle mocks too now, but like mostly like Lego Star Wars. And even then within the designing program has trouble oftentimes finding ways to make certain pieces fit. You just have to like lay it down. Um, so that's definitely something, you know, that they try to uh, work out and something that I think in years to come, like Guinness was saying, they'll work on it more and more um, to make it an even better program. Uh, it's open source too, which means that like, it's, you know, like a blender or like a, anything you'd, you'd find on a GitHub. It's constantly being improved by, by an active community, which is awesome. Right. Yeah. Kumo Rocks talks about Shapeways. Yeah, Shapeways is pretty insane. Um, you can find... People actually make pieces on there. It's really interesting, like masks and all that. I got actually a, like a Bionicle ring on there. Um, so you find... A lot of people do a lot of like 3D printing now. Um it just depends. Like there's so many different qualities that you can get. And like the really good ones are going to be, you know, super expensive, obviously. Um, in the long term, I guess, you know, it would save you money, but you know, that's the big thing when it comes to 3d printing, like I don't know. And you guys probably agree just the pieces alone, the quality isn't going to be quite there. Like, you know, um, a socket isn't going to maybe even fit in perfectly or like stay as, like posable and as clean as like you know a lego like piece produced piece would like something from a mold right there yeah there are distinct disadvantages if, if some people aren't going to be able to get over that hump like i think of uh my friend nathan who is like analog everything he's everything physical uh some people just aren't gonna be okay they're they need to have the sets but right. for those people who are like able to go you know because here's the way i think about it and this is especially applicable if you're like you know an adult, or if what you do with your bionicles is mostly just display them. Um, mostly, all you do is display them, so you look at them. And I have cats. I literally can't display them half the time because my cats <laughs> will knock them over. Oh my so god! <laughs> studio lets me have a huge like I've literally taken pictures. Uh, actually, I'll throw that in as my last picture here <clears throat> of like a digital version of my uh, a bionicle studio. And I have like, you know, all virtual shelves and I would put them on virtual shelves and like that is satisfying enough for me. It fills that same need that or that same desire of having, you know, a big wall. Not well, maybe not quite, but you know, close enough. Right. For the time being. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff that I want to pull up here. Let me select them. I'm gonna be right back. You guys keep talking. I have to grab something from the kitchen. Oh god. I left yeah, it there. Uh, <laughs> One sec, I'll be right back. <laughs> Actually, uh, something I've said earlier about how um, there's a lot, I think there's a lot more people uh, than is realized, especially from the, the early years, who didn't fully grasp and who didn't stick with Bionic forever. Not to say that they weren't fans. Like, again, I think uh, I was specifically thinking of my buddy Nathan because he, I asked him, like, oh, you know, do you want to come do Bionicle stuff when I started a project a couple months ago or last year or whatever? And he played with Bionicle, you know, when he was growing up, but he didn't actually, uh, you know, remember a whole bunch about what Bionicle's story was or they were just robots you know what I mean like lots of people had Bionicles who didn't actually comprehend the fullness of it you know maybe they had one or two and they were mostly or any lots of kids who were Lego kids and had two or three Bionicles but they didn't actually know what Bionicle was they yeah they didn't know any better right yeah and they just had you know one or two or, or and sometimes you'd be like I don't know, here's an experience. Let's see if anybody has ever had this experience. You're a big Bionicle fan. You go to somebody else's fan who has Bionicles, and like they're clearly like only half interested in it, and you 
try and convince them. Right. Give, try and convince them to give you a piece that they have that you want. Yeah, no, that was a thing when I was a kid, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You'd be like, hey. I, I remember specifically I wanted so badly Golly's mask because Golly was the only one that I didn't have back when I was a kid with the Tolamata. I got her now. Nice. But it took me 25 years, 20, 20 years to get it. So. <laughs> All right, let me pull I up. Four golly Let's in my life. Time. No, five, sorry. Five? It took you 20 years to get, to get a mask that has only existed for 11? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see. I'm going to grab a couple of these photos and pull them up so you guys can kind of see some of the stuff people have created. Pretty wild, actually. Wow. I've been sharing the Fine ones in the, uh, the voice chat via my video. Or like these, so, um, Biotube TV, like these 3D renders, you do these like little videos. Is that through Studio as well? Yeah, I, uh, my renders are through Studio, so. And you're able to like, so you're able to actually create like, essentially like video with that, like a little video. Oh, I you could actually do yeah. animations. I've, I've done animations in studio. I can send you one of those, actually. What? Actually? Yeah, it's, it's, look, it's very crude, and it's, right. it's much better to take it and go into Blender to do it, but totally possible. I'll show you. Right. Yeah, because that's... Yeah, you can do that. To me, that's like, you know, there's thing... Blender and all that, like, but, yeah. you know, I know that that's one thing people often use. Here, let me pull up this one that you did. Uh, that I really like, uh, Guinness, uh, just because it's really cute. Okay, check this out. These are the little Matoran that he's made. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not mine. Those are not mine. That's actually, uh, I'll find the guy's Or you name, sent it to I, me, Guinness. I, I, render, I rendered them for him, but they're, they're not mine. That's awesome. That's still awesome that you can render them for him. Let me see if I can All find the another. I shared were stuff that I built. Well, some of them were mine. Some of them were other people's mocks. Uh, I put a bunch of stuff. I like this giant jellyfish. Let me pull that one up. Wow. See, that's the it's the, the amount of creativity. It's insane. Wow. A lot of spooky masks. Right, right. Let me go. Let me see if I can find this new one. I think you know it's like a uh, it's like a prime example of what people can do. You know, it's at, like kind of like sky's the limit almost with things like this. Yeah, let me show this one. So this is, I thought this was awesome. You sent me this and it's like, oh, like how, you know. That, that one is mine actually, that's my, my own model. How the heck do you even, not only like think See, of this, but you like. This is actually a great example of what studio can do that real sets can't do. Right. You can't build that. I mean, like maybe you could build that, but I don't think you could get, ever get those parts and those colors <laughs> and those like. You could you really could, build that unless could, you... You could build it, but it would look crappy without paint. Yeah. It would, like, fall would apart to... and stuff. And it, exactly, that's the other part. It would be hard to display. It would. It's just not practical as a real build. Um, like, like, a couple of my... I've done three of those, like, big-ass rocky creatures. And right. they're just so much fun to make. That's, I think, one of the best things that Studio has going for it is the obvious element of you have unlimited fucking pieces. Here, let me pull up... Um, Gia, I'll pull up your, like, Toa team. Let me see oh, if yeah, I can do Mario that. Revamps? Or, yeah, at least from what I what I can see, yeah, that's what they are, right? Yeah, look at that. Toa, Mari, PNG. Um, it's, it's, so, another thing I understand about, like, the abilities you have in, like, this program is you can add, like, scratches, you can add, like, different lighting setups. So, like, if you wanted something... You know, if you wanted the light coming from the right or the left, you can kind of do that, right? Yep. Yeah. There's like, I believe, five uh, different lighting sort of setups. There's like, you know, for one for like matte plastic for, for it looking really dull. There's ones to make it look bright. Um, and they're actually, they've recently, like, I think maybe it was just last year that they added this crazy new render engine that allows these yeah. really good render images called EyeSight. But the EyeSight renderer is, it's honestly better than it seems like it deserves to be um it's amazing at rendering lifelike looking uh biography here are the mari yeah thank you look. 
This is Captain Gia's creation. <laughs> so good. The close-ups you can do are also pretty epic. The the drawback to those close-ups, depending on the quality of the render, it takes forever because it has to. Because I always render in the scratches because I really like the right uh, the imperfections, and the imperfections is what makes it look more realistic. So if you have like fingerprints, scuffs, scratches. It'll look more grounded as opposed to have everything glossy. So I can't find. I think I might have. It might have got lost in the uh, the shuffle of my old <laughs> item files. But I do have. If you, if you care to show this, this is an animation that was made in Blender using um, files that were all made in Studio and then directed directly imported, including the building. Um, everything in this was made in Studio, then imported into Blender and animated. Oh, cool. Okay, this oh, video. Yeah. Let well, me see, see if I can find another one. Well, yeah, let me see if I can download it and pull it up. Video. Wow, this is awesome. If it'll play the audio, um, the, the voice... It probably is will. From, uh, the voice is from, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alan, one of our guys, mm. one of the guys on our team. Uh, what's his, what's his, I'm trying to remember his username. Hold on. <laughs> wow, this is pretty great. <laughs> Obviously, you know, guy, it's like... The guy who plays Lesovic in, uh, in Edition 2. It's his voice. Yeah. Let me see. Be still and weary. Quick time. I mean, it's it's awesome to me. It's it's like awesome that it almost shows you like the potential. Here, yeah. There we go. It should be able to play. Let me play it in uh, just a second here. All right. This is it. Yeah. Welcome, my kid. Be still yeah. and weary as I recount <laughs> yeah, plays the, the history of the altar. Oh my god! See, a little yeah. more work and I mean, people could make straight up full animations with this. That was, so the plan is, and like maybe I'll finish it Welcome one day, but like, that's just a demonstration of how possible it is that I was going to do a full, uh, you know, video story in Blender with, with Bionicle characters. And this is actually right. my, my own story, they're not Bionicle. actually Bionicles, like it's like its own universe, but it's still, the point stands, like you can use this for an incredible amount of uh, uh, storytelling. Totally. Um, yeah, and I feel like even just building out concepts, like, absolutely. it's like absolutely unlimited. It's, it's crazy the stuff you can make. Oh my god. Um, these you don't exactly have to, uh, use the Bionicle IP anymore to make uh, stories. Well, you never did. But as, as kids, we were kind of like, we wanted to have our own characters, like, in, in the canon and interact with the characters that you liked a lot and maybe even disliked a lot like, here's something uh, really cool i think th these like twin serpents are awesome look at these yeah those ones are another one that you couldn't make in studio right yeah 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 obviously like, good luck getting all those rakshi backs good luck have fun <laughs> right oh yeah yeah no no <laughs> not to mention i think at some point they actually clip a little bit so yeah, you can see like on the on the sides of them they clip because you know studio and I wanted them to look like they were waving. But that's another thing is you can make a bionicle pose in a way that would be physically impossible as long as you know yeah. you don't mind the awkwardness of what it might look like. Yeah, oh so wow, if, this, this if is you great. Bring, like, if look you at bring that. A mock out, like like my self mock only has a ninety degree elbow bend. Like in studio, you can go beyond that. Yeah, and like, see this this image that all of that is studio. That that's not even in Blender. So like, the, what I did was I, um, you can use another program. This is actually something we haven't touched on. Part Designer. Right. Part Designer is a company or a companion program to Studio that lets you make custom parts and like add in the attachments so that they'll function like the proper part. And you can do this with anything. So what you can do is what like the objects, the building, and the, the mountains and stuff. Is I would take like the uh, Lego like it's like a mountain it's like a little mountain piece right looks like it's supposed to be a mountain and you just bring that to part designer and you can scale it up and then you can export it as a huge lego piece right now when you do this you're pushing studio to its limits and unless you've got a beast computer um i wouldn't recommend building uh, physical scenes in studio take it into blender but if your computer can handle it it can do it <laughs> Right. At that point, it becomes more of a hardware issue. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm. So Guinness and I, Guinness and I have both both have uh, uh, second like 2000 series uh, RTX cards from Nvidia. Yeah. So, so we can our, handle our rendering. It, 
our rendering uh, ability can be a little faster and a lot a little better. But if you have like integrated graphics, like if you're on a Mac, it might not look as good. So no, it's yeah. Purely I just tried my to, computer rendering with it's purely, one. It's purely down to like uh, uh, to a hardware. Product. I was today. I like just had fun and tried to attempt to build like a PC. And I got it. I got everything I needed except, obviously, the video card, the graphics card. I got everything yeah, because you can't for like eight. Right now. I got for everything for like eight hundred. I'm like, okay, cool, a couple hundred more for vi video card. Awesome. And every single one that I need for at least the four K editing and also rendering and also just like I need to like spec out to at least the max that I like I have need. Been following the GPU market, it's insane. For a long time. It's what like. The RTX 3080, which is supposed to run at uh, $700 at uh, MSRP, it's running at like two or three times the price. Yeah, the it is. Because crypto miners and bots are just taking every single card that's in stock within 10 seconds of a restock. That's insane. That's like unfortunate. Um... Like you can't even get a new card with, with how fast those bots and scalpers get those cards. Like it's the, not even fair. Issue with the issue with attaining a powerful, like to be clear, you can use Studio just fine um, if you, you know, have a relatively modern PC and not like a, a beast. However, um, and this is something you probably won't encounter, but if you if you try to push Studio to its limits and you want to say, if you start putting two, three thousand pieces, you're going to push it. Um, I, I know this from experience. If, if you put too many pieces, you're going to end up with such a slow experience. You can actually end up with this very strange experience where right around two or 3,000 pieces, it will feel like it's still functioning and it'll just start having weird glitches and slowing down randomly. So there's, it, Studio's definitely not perfect um, and it is better to have a stronger card, which, you know, can be a bit of an obstacle to people, but right. I, think, I think overall more people are willing to make the investment you know, or they already have a computer or a laptop or whatever, so they can go, okay, I'll, I'll do Studio. Whereas the prices these days on sets, it, can be ridiculous. I tried to buy a single Rocky set. I was going to buy myself a single Rocky set, and I couldn't get a single Rocky set delivered to Canada for anything less than a hundred dollars. Oh before. man, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it, it was impossible. So, well, here's something uh, BioTube TV sent me, and honestly, guys, now I'm beginning to think this is what the uh, 90th anniversary sh set should most likely be. <laughs> Good guy statue. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Troglomorph yes. statue. That's pretty good That's right the, there. Thousands of parts. Uh, I, I desperately want to know the story of Good Guy. I want to know the story of the of the person who made Good Guy. Were they just like at work and like what do I do? Like I gotta finish this set. I was told to make like this promo set. I got like <laughs> forty pieces here. Uh, and they're like all Vaki arms. What am I gonna do? Right. That's what I'm just gonna. It's I'm so gonna pricey. Like, ho like hodgepodge something here, and it's a good guy. Whatever. No, just, just I mean there we go. I'd say it's safe to say that we're entering an era now that buying Bionicle, you know, in whole sets is like looking for graphics cards basically for a PC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean you can find <laughs> graphics cards, but finding one at a good deal, uh, not so much. Like I want to build, I want to build the Cardass Dragon. But, um, can I really do that if, like, it's going to cost me hundreds of dollars? Oh, here, let's get Thrawn in the chat. Yo, yo! That's, uh... Rocka. All right, all the windows look good, too. How's it going, Thrawn? Have you been listening at all, kind of what we're talking about? In and out, mostly <clears throat> answering people's questions in your chat. Yeah, thanks for doing that. So, what would you say are, like, um... How would you be able to touch on the subject of, you know, it doesn't even have to pertain exactly to Bionicle, but 3D printing, studio, um, kind of all, like, the future of, like, fan building. I fucking love studio. Right. So, this, that's my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it, I mean, compared to LEGO Digital Designer, which I'd used since I was, like, oh, God, I think I used LEGO Digital Designer when it first came out. Like, Lego first made it. Yeah. And you could, like, upload your LDD models. 
Yeah, I remember straight. that. And you could buy into the like, pieces. And you could buy the pieces, and I built like a five hundred dollar warship, <laughs> and I was like, "There's no way I'm gonna buy this." <laughs> you right? But, you'd even you could even make a box, right? Yeah, you could make box art. I mean, it wasn't good box art, but it was box art. Right. They mentioned that like LDD was literally what they used, or at least the beginning stage of what they used to make stuff like the, the Lego Movie, and Studio is better than that. So oh, it's way better. Yeah. You can literally like if you, like I said, there's gonna be people who f trace their roots to starting in Studio and become full on animators. Right. Yeah, they can become full on VFX artists. Uh, oh, it's, it's like. It's happening. Yeah. Like, it, it's gotten so much easier with uh, with the the technology getting to be so inexpensive and Blender being so user friendly. There's just a hmm. massive learning curve. And Blender just released, uh, if people don't know, Cycles 3.0, I believe it is, or uh, something like that. There's a new update, and Cycles Renderer is supposed to be, I've heard, uh, up to two times faster, I believe I've heard, I heard. Hmm. <laughs> which is like, oh my god. Uh, so, and Blender's just constantly getting better. Like, every, it's honestly overwhelming how fast Blender gets gets better. Yeah. For like, a free app. Impressive. For a free app. And well, fr it's... freeware is is honestly the future, and it's not, not only is the future, it's the past. Like, right? Almost, there are so many programs that are just versatile, and they do a great job. In fact, find me a freeware program. I like this Kongu. Oh. This was yours. I think, G I think a lot of people liked that Gia. Kongu mock. Yeah. <laughs> Again, like showing you what you can do with Studio. I mean, that's pretty wild, right there. That is fucking badass. Dude. It was on. It was on Ben Cossey's uh, Bionicle Inspiration series about a month or so ago. You're right. And it, and it got a lot of attention on Reddit because it was just like, whenever I whenever I rendered this thing out, I laughed super hard. It was like, oh my god, it's so unnecessary. But my god, it, that's it's awesome. It's Bionicle Master Chief, dude. <laughs> right? It looks like that to me, at least. Is that, is that King K's mask? Yes, it is. That is such a cool... It looks like Cthulhu, that mask, dude. Everyone says it. Everyone says that. It does, though. It totally does. Yeah, it's, I get Everyone... Cthulhu vibes. I definitely get I Cthulhu, get Cthulhu vibes. vibes. For sure. Although, actually, uh, my, my buddy... Uh, you know the lore writer, uh, Gio. He's yeah. uh he's done a really good mock that has like I, can't, I think he used like uh what's it called Palmer's <laughs> things. Get to the point just sent me this. This is oh, pretty get funny. To the point's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's a fun little uh little mock. So, um Thrawn, um, we were talking about it yeah. as far as you know 3D printing pieces goes, even with Lego system. You know, mm -hmm. what, what? how do you gauge, like, the quality that you need? Because, like, I don't know anything about 3D printers, but I can assume that, like, you need a liquid of some sorts that hardens. Like, there's probably certain levels of quality that you yeah, get that actually produce there, usable pieces, and then, like... There are 3D printers that could do it, um, but they're usually really expensive, right? Because they're, like, the 3D printers where you, you, like, shoot a laser at, like, a liquid... Right. ...that is, like, suspended, right? And as the laser is shot into the liquid, it'll solidify the, like, plastic and it'll pull out the part that you've designed where like the 3d printers now they use like spools of pla right and they right, design yeah. the part from the ground up so it's uh addition oh, instead okay, of like okay. substitution right so those parts are really really flimsy and will break really really easily so your best bet is either a get an extruded extr extrusion plastic system where like you basically make parts like lego does right and i know people who do that right because there's a <laughs> like brick arms it. like brick yeah, arms brick arms uh eclipse graphics is another great example they do tons of custom lego parts right right but you know it, it's it's money right it's an investment mm -hmm. so you're not going to do it you know out the bat for for fun right <laughs> um where like the 3d printers like they're a good start um it might honestly be easier for you to try to make the model in as, as a 3d printer using like the pla spools and then make a mold of that part and then try to cast it that would probably be a better option right because and, like yeah those those things are fragile they're very fragile and it's one thing when it's like lego and it's bricks that you can kind of like 
you know, put onto each other. If it's bionic, where you're dealing with like ball sockets and the all, clipping, s- yeah, it, it, <laughs> do a, it's a lot of wear and tear. The clipping, it's just a brick. It's not that big of a deal, but it's the the ball and socket system will definitely cause right. a lot of tension. And I know people three D print masks and weapons because that generally can work. You know, yeah, if it that, fits that, into that, an axle or it's like less stress. Right, but, you know, I just, when it comes to, like, ball sockets specifically, if you're trying to, like, 3D render ball sockets and have that function, I just, it's like, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, another thing is, oh my god, one second. <laughs> no worries. Sorry, uh, another thing is, like, a huge difference is, like, there's two categories of, like, people who use Studio. There's the artists, and there's the, like, designers, right? Because the right. artists will do... I have every single piece and every single color. I'm going to make something that looks super dope, right? Mm-hmm. And that's awesome because you can use any piece, any piece of any color because you're not limited by the actuality, right? And then the unlimited designers... Unlimited inventory, unlimited color palette. Exactly. And the designers are the people who turn on, hide all unavailable colors, and all of a sudden you're limited by how much is each part how much is this model going to cost when I finish? If someone's going to buy this, is it going to be an acceptable amount? And then how much do I charge for the model based off of the price of the model's construction and stuff like that? Yeah. Both are equally hard. They're both not easy to do. No, but both no. are very fun. And a huge benefit, I think, also of Studio is that it connects directly to BrickLink. So when you're done with your model, you can extract the entire xml document which is every single piece that is used plug that into bricklink and buy the model you just made which is i think the coolest part right it's the same right. as like what lego was doing but the difference is is it's like a third party system instead of all done in lego right all right um let's see in the chat kuma rock says sweet tank yeah i put up the like tie Thank fighter you. tank the the tie mauler from empire at war i have it somewhere in my room Tributron, how's it going? Chuglet is there. Odd Dude 21. I can finally build my life size Tahu statue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good luck. It's going to be thousands of pieces and thousands Thousand. of dollars. Um, Spose Senju, I've never used it, but I've had the program downloaded for a while. Maybe one day. Now, I think you were telling him, Thrawn, that like you can do yeah, all yeah. sorts of things with it, so oh, he might be checking it, checking it out. Um, it's worth it, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. I'm actually going to be working with a friend making a uh, program for kids to like teach them studio as I'm like actually, a after school program. I'm actually in studio right now. Right. Uh, and like that's like invaluable, you know, right there. It is because like kids, you know, they're so used to being limited by the parts that they have. And, may, you know, maybe some kids don't have the money to be able to buy, you know, hundred dollar Lego sets. So if I could teach them how to just hop on like a school computer, download Studio, and just do it all on their own, and like use that imagination, uh, I think that would be really beneficial. So spend a thousand dollars on a computer. Save well, I mean, they're using school. Money. Com- they're using school computers, right? So <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Use those old old iMacs that suck. <laughs> like the the fastest way to do it is basically that, you know. Like, it gets even faster once you figure out what the keyboard shortcuts are. Like control yeah, it took C, me, control it took me D, some F. Time. Um, and then as well, there's the instruction maker as well. Also, that's inside mm-hmm. the program. Also, an incredible system where like you can make your own instructions and like print them out and like design stuff for yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. So there's there's just so many things you can do with it, you know. Right, and um. Yeah, I just think it's an interesting topic of debate, especially as 3D printing gets more and more advanced. With Lego, it'll take some, definitely. Yeah, it'll take some time. Like, as yeah, technology for sure. gets better, it also gets cheaper. So it all, does. It, it really is just a matter of time before we can start making new characters again with new molds. I've heard that there are some ways to like get rid of the seams. Uh, you can like dip your 3D printed parts in acetone, mm-hmm. and that'll... like kind of remove the seams and then you can like plaster over them you but also, i don't know like, take some you can like heavily coat them in like clear coat spray paint and then just sand it down and then it'll just move that over right this one is i like this little mech that you did thrown which one <laughs> the uh annihilation droid 
Oh, from Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah. That was one of my commissions. The guy was very happy with that. I just got in, uh, the, a dude who commissioned me like three weeks ago just got back to me today. And he wants a two to three thousand piece commission. <laughs> oh my oh god. My, he's, he's gonna be paying a good chunk of money for it, but hey. I mean, if he. Yeah, more work, am I right? If he trusts you too, I mean. He does. Whoa. He's, he's, he's sure that it's gonna work out. Trivuton just sent me something awesome. This Tahumata. Whoa. I just saw it. It's pretty dope. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. And this is again, like just one of the things that studio can offer you. Cause it looks like this one, you know, the lighting is totally different than, um, yeah, there's like lighting that you can choose and like artificial lighting. How is the like sword is like glowing and stuff. Right. Look at this. I mean that insane detail. Oh my God. That looks awesome. And, like, you can go in and, yeah, I guess add lights and add, like... Mm -hmm. See, this is what I think Bionicle could be if LEGO wanted to, like, redo it. It's, redo like, it. it need to be just, like, to look more, like, made of LEGO pieces. But you're, this is would be so expensive. <laughs> like, uh, I don't it, know. It, it, it's a lot of pieces. It's probably 300 plus pieces. The piece count I, I can easily see that being, like, 80, 80 bucks. Yeah, 65 to I mean, 80. I mean, yeah. figure, though... Right, yeah, but like, for can, like collectors, see, right? Yeah, like having a, a high end, uh, very high piece count uh, collectors <sighs> yeah. series. It's like high a UCS high version high of Bionicle that they <laughs> <laughs> do. Yeah, Bionicle right? fans would eat that. Oh yeah, they honestly oh, they should do that. that though. Oh, they should. They they should do a lot of things. They're just not. Like ever <laughs> since ever since Bionicle ended, and especially after it ended the second time, like I haven't found myself buying a whole bunch of lego sets that much i'll literally one, just one buy reason, the big ones one reason is just one reason is just because i don't have the uh re the real estate in my current living space to house such a thing <laughs> but but another is that i haven't really found any of lego's new material that interesting to me definitely hit or miss i see i like the modular buildings and i like you know the big You've like been collecting those for a while though yeah no well, that's true definitely but in you have all of them though no i of course not now it <laughs> you can't like you can get all of them still but like they're so much more expensive now they're like 800 dollars instead of 150 yep. which was like a solid deal that's true you could try to piecewise them from brick link and just replace the prints with non-prints that might be cheaper <laughs> who knows i've look, i've like tried to do that so many times and every time you know even doing it through brick link and re-piecing oh, it it always ends up costing big mon big mon yeah it's it, it can be that's for sure especially with like the how volatile the secondhand brick market can be it, it right. can get ridiculous fast hey, the secondhand found, brick uh... market is pretty bad right now <sighs> I found a studio animation. Yeah, send it to uh, send it to the voice text chat. Yeah, that, all all done in studio. Now this was a, just a test, and it was very low FPS, but all studio. Is I there? Added uh, I added it, but that's it. Is there any copyrighted music or not? No, no, I don't even think there's sound. Oh wow, this looks sound. awesome. Yeah. And uh but okay, so like, let's get an idea. Like, how long did this animation alone take? You know. Well, uh, since they're, <laughs> they were full quality renders, I probably about six hours. Wow. Uh, to render out all the images. That's yeah. just crazy. But that makes sense. I mean, that is what it is. Here, That's let's why see. I just like, to render for like a week and walk away, and uh, you'll have like. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, not, it's honestly not that far off of what actual animation productions have to spend yeah, yeah, yeah. time. Definitely. So it's like, if you were, say, in a situation where you were, let's hypothetically say you were working on a Bionicle movie, right? Mm -hmm. And you have, like, you could literally use Studio to animate. Wow, it looks great. Portions of that. Like, you could do basically everything but the backgrounds and do the backgrounds mm -hmm. in a separate program. In, like, it would be ineffic inefficient. Yeah. But the point is you could do it. They'll probably Whoa. use, like, a bunch of plugins and stuff to do it. You can yeah. use Studio for character design, character modeling, basically everything you need it to do in order to get like the best. Here, actually, I've got a, I've got one more. 
got one more. Yeah, let's better. let's go ahead and look at all of them. This is awesome. I'm just playing it over and over again. It's wild, like, I mean, it's, it is a little annoying that it took, I guess, six so hours, long. but like, <laughs> even stop motion, you know, alone takes a long time, but this is almost always going to like, the one thing that you don't have to worry about with this that you would have to worry about with like stop motion is the like lighting, you know, you can kind of just do whatever you want and backgrounds too. Oh, fun. this is another one. This one's four seconds long. Yeah, this was actually, this is the intro for, um, like, the first three episodes of Bionicle Studio on my channel. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. People want to see it back. <laughs> it'll, it's, it'll come back, people. It's not dead. It's an hibernation, <laughs> okay? It's an hibernation. All right, let's look at this. Awesome. <laughs> That's like, it really like, just kind of like insane, the quality. As like the hand is opening up, you can see all the details on in every single piece. It looks like yeah. a real, like, yeah, it looks like the Lego it movie. Like a bionicle, or like does. the way the Lego movie animates their, you know, characters. Like it looks like almost basically real life stop motion. Oh my God. It's really cool. That's crazy awesome. Wow. Let's I'm see. To find somewhere I've got a really cool Let's see picture. what the chat is saying. Um, uh, Spose Andrew says, "Love the way those arms are connected. Looks awesome. If you took 3D build to shape ways, wouldn't uh, just be a statue? Because I've seen a Kapaka statue. On sh oh, okay. Build a 3D build to shape ways. If I I use Photoshop for work, I'm familiar with programs like that. Definitely want to give it a try. Yeah." This is this is the way a lot of people have been connecting. If you're doing a metro build, connecting their uh, like uh, arms is because it just allows for more mobility. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> this is cool. That's how I, I actually built that one uh, in real life first. So, so that that one is actually buildable. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. That's um, also another thing that Studio can be used for. It can be used as a way to prototype your mods so you don't have to go through your entire art supply to, to look for the right pieces. You already have the right pieces. You just need to either buy them or get them, and you can just you can get them from your collection, and you can just build it up like, like that. Here's some really little cool, trial and error. Uh, here's some really cool 3D, uh, like, environments that i built that they've since been retired in favor of better stuff that's been done by uh king k and, and blender but this is all 3d stuff entirely in oh wow yeah let me check all uh, this out that was for like project class gonna be rising and like all of that's in, it, none of that is uh is blender it's all studio 100 all of this whoa yeah. this is like so much let me see i gotta like pull all these this That's is like, crazy. It's, like a, it's a progression you can see. I, I, I was like in, improving it. I think the, the last one, the, the one in the middle is actually the earliest one, I believe. Core processor looks awesome. Whoa. I mean, that's pretty cool. Let me pull it up. Transition. Yeah, wow. That looks great. <laughs> what? What? I mean, this is, looks epic to me. Yeah, like the so the the Matanu universe is a separate. I made them all. I just I think I took the gears. So I took a picture of the uh, island of uh, or you know the Mithorn universe, and I put that picture. You can import a picture as a flat image in Studio because you can put right. decals Legos, right? So you put that image flat down, and then I took gears like you know your standard uh, you know uh, regular size. I can't remember what the, the proper name is. Uh, for that size gear uh and then you just basically outline the islands with the gears and right then you, you know, every island uh for that and then you just set the, the color of the gear to glowing like i think trans neon and then it gives it that look or whatever it is 
or not for the gears, but like the pipes and stuff. Yeah, I like the number four too. This one, that's epic. Whoa, you even have a little like t toe on the ground. Is that jaller? Yeah, so that's supposed to be because this was originally done um, as part of the scene in um, Geo. You might know better because I'm, I'm terrible with the 2008 story, but it's like it's part of the 2008 story where they go into the core processor and there's like two dead Glit or not Glitorian, uh, Agori. Or maybe uh -huh. just Glatorian. I can't remember. Uh, but there's like two dead guys, and so that's supposed to be the two dead Glatorian in the middle of uh, the core processor, and that's like. I don't believe that I've read that part of the story yet. I've mainly yeah, been I, I reading the stuff that I've been working on for Ignition yeah. Three. <laughs> it's pretty ironic that I'm, uh, uh, you know, I work on Ignition Three, and my knowledge of 2008 is middling, to say. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. I love all these angles that you're able to do, too. I'll be right back. This is wow. This is wild. Um, oh, okay, we got Tributron in on here. Let me see. Do, do, do. Oh, wow. And so this is how you do all the Thrawn. This is how you do basically all the instructions. The instructions, yeah. Wow. Which have to be done manually. <sighs> right? That's so much work. It is, yeah. But, you know, it's cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool. It's cool, though. It's cool. <laughs> wow. Look and those are the small ones. Those, those aren't even the, like, you know, complicated <sighs> models I've done. Take hours to make it. <sighs> Right. I just checked the stream and I saw that uh, my camera has been frozen for the last few minutes. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Transition. So I it off and let's see how it'll work when I turn it back on. Okay, this is awesome. Look at this. I I think what's um, fascinating about this is it shows kind of more of what like you're able to accomplish. Look at, like, full-on scenes that we've never seen, like, realized, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. Wow. That's epic. That looks awesome. Oh, we have Tributron here. Maybe we toss Tributron in for a second. Um, doo -doo. um, let me look at the Discord. Thrawn, do you mind if I pull Tributron in for a bit yeah, here? Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, let me... Doo -doo -doo. I'll dip. Um, at least this Discord has really been working out a lot better. All right, let's pull him in. Hello, my fellow compatriot. What's going on, Trib? What's up, yeah. Trib? It's going good. Um, <laughs> I'm working on my new mask. I am right now working on like a a Miramax. Um, Mata head in a way, a Miramax style Mata head from the Bionicle films because we never really got to see like the the heads, uh, only really got like a back view of it. But from what I was able to decipher, I was able to get like a full like three D model design of said head. So right now I'm building a physical life size version uh, for right. the costume I'm working on. On the same sort of topic, I, um, I like, um, I was like on YouTube the other week or a couple of weeks back and there are some people that do a lot of like the, uh, movie like replica sets or like at least like looking more like the films. Oh yeah. There are a few people that do that. Mm -hmm. Like I've, oh, like I've seen this. It's kind of crazy. Let me see. Let me pull up my Rahaga Gaki. Yeah, Luke's I mean. props. This is nuts. Yeah, it's like a Makutamak. Dude, it, it's crazy. Like, And I've like commented in there like, oh no, it's really easy. I'm like, there's no way this is easy, dude. Yeah, here we go. I can probably pull this video up. Let me see. Do -do. Yeah, in one moment I'll pull this up. But have you like Trev, have you met messed around obviously with like studio? Have you like 
Have you ever purchased or done like 3D printed pieces or masks or like? Oh, well, you, you see, like I do a lot of um, 3D modeling when it comes of like working with stud.io, but I never actually printed anything myself. Uh, I have friends, however, that do have 3D printers, you know, and I ask them, you know, to like print this or that, you know, and they're very kind enough to oblige. And that's how I was able to get uh, the Makuta Tridas mask um, and uh, sundry other different types of masks for like all sorts of builds that I have done. Um, let me go ahead and post like my my Hellrix actually because um, that one in particular does have like a 3D printed mask as well oh here's this video i want to pull it up let me show you let me pull it up i'll pull it up on stream also, yeah I was looking for so this is it sean matthews or whatever does these mocks and look at how movie accurate this makuda is yeah uh, oh, sean, yeah. Matthews, sean yeah. matthews also goes by uh, makuda nui mocks on Instagram, so you, you gotta give this guy a follow. He's really, really good. Oh, and yeah, he's oh, very good. Look like, at that one on the far left. That's insane. Yeah, it looks like straight out of the film. Like, there's no that question. Looks, he, uh, since that video, he's added, like, those green splotches of infection, too. So. Look at this one. The, the, oh, Taka, the nice. Taka Nuva one is, is insane. Yeah, all of the Taka Nuva ones are really good. What? And I like commented. He's he was like, it's not that hard. I'm like, dude, what? This has to be a lot of work. <laughs> it is uh, a lot of work because you can't really get that same like effect without paint. The way those Toa Nuva limbs can connect and like the way that they bend too, it's like those are those are I believe three D printed parts. Yeah, right. Like they have to be. Like, it, like it looks bionicle. It looks perfect, like proportionately to the movie and bionicles. It's like, how did you do that? Uh, and uh, like, how, how well do those three D printed parts work too? It's like, he's also cut um, some existing parts in order for them to work. Right, and he's like trimmed some down. The Vakama is crazy good. Oh, the look at that. Oh my god. He has so posted good. that Vakama onto his Instagram. That is so good. It's insane. oh yeah, that's amazing. Like. Vakama. He's also made like a Matoran version of Vakama as well. Yeah, just next to it. Uh, see it there. Look. Yeah. He pulls out. See? Wow. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the only thing closest I've done to that was basically do, do the shadow hand function for hey, like, the Terran eggs. Cool. <laughs> this one... Takua is great, too. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, man. That mask is like so much, so insanely oh film my accurate. Gosh. I love that. It looks a little cursed though. It does. It's a little cursed. It's a little the mask cursed. makes it without because it doesn't have a nose. It makes him look like he's like been stuffed up a little bit. <laughs> but uh, it is Takua. I've seen a really good uh, uh, Bakama and Takua done with I think completely legal tech or parts. It looks just like the movie. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, the no comma. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a nice no comma. It has the right sheen and everything. That's so cool. Right. Oh, does, he, does he make all the masks himself? Those none of those are like the ones off shape. No, those are that. those are King K's, I think. Are those King K's? Yeah. I believe they are. Like, from like uh with a comma. They look pretty darn close to it. The Matoran version I don't think uh, was the, the Matoran but... version was made by Tropy Nui, I believe. Because yeah. Brian just does such good work that it's hard to tell if it's like ripped right out of the movie. Right? So it's hard to be real though. Or, like... Wow. It looks straight out of the movie. I, I want know. It's crazy. Vakama's my favorite. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> yeah, buy a Vakama <laughs> from him. How much do you want for it? <laughs> Vakama recently. I'll take your entire out. stock. <laughs> literally. I'll give you my first child. I will yeah. literally take I literally whatever I can t honestly the Takanuva is what I need. The Takanuva is really good. Yeah, I would like to like, see like him do the Usanui, you know, with 
you know, the paintwork that he can do to it. You know? I'd like to know how the hell Holly fit inside the use of it. <laughs> inside a little Roxy back piece. Yeah. Right, yeah. What the fuck? Well, she, she came from the circus. That's all I can say. She's really good. She's <laughs> <laughs> places, apparently. <laughs> That's insane. Now I wonder, does the, does the piece, does, I think it rotates. Does it rotate just like you would think it would? Because I, I always imagined that that it would have to because, you know, you look at the set version. I just know if these are 3D printed, like, pieces, they can't all just totally work like normal. They're Unless this all guy... all 3D printed pieces, but a good chunk of them are. Like, these limbs like, right here, like, the, like just the Nuva limbs. Maybe the limbs sure. and the mask, but I don't really see it. The, the, the limbs, the mask, and the end of the staff, that's like all I really see. I think the rest seems real. Maybe, well, maybe the chest, actually. Oh, there's like a cod piece. Right. Yeah, that's part of the Anika armor. The, it's oh, like is the top it? half of the Anika. Oh, so yeah, that might be Upper it, leg armor. It's just in, been chopped in half. Yeah. <laughs> so the the anything, masks like... are really good. That, that's so, the yeah, thing he, that is. He also uses like illegal connections, but I don't really care because they just look cares, so good. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna be painting like your entire figure, you know, it, you know, it's fine to cut a, go ahead and cut a few pieces because this you're making is... such a custom piece. The already. Turaga Duma and Lecon, Turaga Lecon mask are wild accurate, like insanely accurate. So are they? They are. The, are his? Wonder yeah. If they are his these masks are both his 3D printing, from what I thought. So if I go, I wonder if he modeled them or if he just uh, printed and painted them. I think uh, some of these were made by Galva. I, mean, I believe. Yeah, they're they're made from uh, Galva. Yeah, they look made awesome. from Galva or Brian. Okay. Actually, the one that's being shown there is Brian's. The, right. The noble Kirill. Right. The noble Kirill is Brian's. Yeah, what it's just about... uncanny. They have to be Brian's. They're just so similar. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's also Brian's. Like, I believe, like, 90% most of those masks that <laughs> are there are Brian's. They're either Galvas or Brian's. Yeah, all so insane! It looks so good. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So it's so, all new I, stuff. I He's that. only been posting this stuff for the past month or two. Here, I found uh, this studio thing. This is a, like, a virtual collection I did. It's like all of the sets I could, I could, uh, I made stacked together. Oh, this together. is awesome. Yeah, let me pull this up. So that just shows, like, that's all studio. Now that was a bitch to render. It, I believe it probably took, like, three hours to render that single image. Collection room. So it was ridiculous. Um, yeah. You can't really like be that. doing much else while you're rendering if you want to be... If, if no, the worst part is, Geo... You know what's even worse? It was on my old computer. <laughs> oh, wow! So it, yeah. it hopefully wouldn't take that long. That's really long. cool, though, that you can like, you yeah. know, show literally all the things that you've done so far. Wow! I see. There's like some Rahi too. Did you just straight up like build those? I built. Accurate? I built every set in 2001 and 2002 to the best of my ability. I believe I'm. As far as I know, uh, I mean, obviously I don't go around looking, but I'm the only one I know that it has done the rock sheet or the Borok Cal. I actually used like, uh, I made custom, you know, the, the, each of their little symbols, and then made the put the decal on in uh, in studio using the like studio's decal feature. So I actually have, the, I have all the sets of 2001 and 2002 made. I didn't get to 2003. Uh, I had started to, but then you know, other things came up. But yeah, every every set in that picture, um, like it, it doesn't show the full at the bottom. I think the bottom has, I think, all of 2002's like Rocky and stuff. But yeah, uh, some of them are revamps, and then on the top there's mostly custom ones. But yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that is impressive. It's fun to just do, anyways, to kind of recreate or uh, rebuild. Yeah, and like um. this for me, uh, it satisfies that desire for having something like this because it's it's gonna be years before I could ever have like anyone actual display like this and <laughs> yeah. even having it like this you would want to I need to have it in glass cuz <laughs> like I said my cat is a demon so <laughs> or maybe your cat's just a cat you know <laughs> that's what oh, they yes. do cat is cat <laughs> i feel I've had a lot of cats they will, the they will always they will always mess with like your models or whatever. That's why people put them in like cases, 
Yeah, I like glass cases. Whoa. What did you just send? Oh, Trib, you sent a bunch more. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, oh wow, the flying gawky. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I... Oh, hold on, let me show... Uh, this hasn't gone around too much, but I made a running running to Hunga build. Like it's a full, it's a kinetic sculpture that runs. Yeah, this is great. Oh my gosh, this is awesome! It's just like the movie Gaki flying. Whoa, this is crazy cool. Yeah. Did you just do this like, for a straight hour? Yeah, I did it because people liked it so much. It's like. Do an hour, and it's like, oh, okay, fine, I'll do one hour first. <laughs> um, I've also made um, I, ones that walk by themselves. Um, like, I made Whoa. Like, like a Marendar mock. Let me. No way. See. Yeah. Trip, one of the best mockists I, I've ever seen. And he has. He's the gear function guru. He really is. He has, yeah. like, light up eyes. I like this. Like oh, my God. You get Makuta to actually have, like, the arm coming out of his, like, coming out of his chest function. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. If you want crazy good functionality and good design aesthetic, you go to Trip. Right. Now, this is a fully articulated, self-walking, eye light up. Uh, Bionicle. Let's check it out. Uh, and it has a modular weapon, so you can swap it out. For... What? Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! Holy crap. It actually moves and does all this stuff, too. No stop motion necessary. This is small soldiers now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. What? How do you put like? How do you make that function go, like with gears just, and? Just flip a switch and put it through a worm gear for extra torque. Because guess what? He's carrying six batteries, so, and a motor. So you need like plenty of like strength in order for him to move. But because he has that extra additional torque, he can drag people. Um, so you can have him drag him build or a sundry other characters he's taking and on that scrawl that scrawl better move <laughs> yeah he's fucked <laughs> watch he's out move. He, he's not paying attention he's got airpods in he's basically going to that scene in in austin powers no! <laughs> wow okay there we go <laughs> get a little close-up view so yeah it reminds me of those first little like boneheads of Voodoo Island yeah, uh, prototypes. That was, that was the interpretation. I was um, <laughs> working on some molds to uh, make his armor metallic uh, green. So I was actually going to resin cast some metallic green CCBS shells and stuff like that just so that I can have him metallic green. Uh, but that didn't go so well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was uh, awesome. Those are great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the flying gawky is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty movie accurate. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, yeah. Listen, I think I'm going to take off, Zach. No worries, no worries. Pretty late over here. Let's Thanks see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Let's see. This is might screw my... Oh, there we go. Wait, no, it worked. We're good. Hey. I can transition and everything is fine. There's just a black window where Geo was, but that's no problem. Or where uh, Guinness was. All right. Cool stuff. Um, How long have we been going? Nice. Hour uh, 15 minutes. So now I guess let me go ahead and uh, I'll read it like the uh, comments or the chat section. Kind of see what people have been talking about. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I think just a lot of people like commenting on how awesome a lot of these mocks were. Yeah, just like movie accurate. Oh yeah, they're talking about the earlier mocks we were looking at. Yeah, it really takes you back to the movies totally. CMOS, thanks for being here. He says, you think there's a black market out there for Bionicle? I mean, <laughs> I don't it's even called, know. It's called Bricklink. 
Yeah, it's BrickLink. That's the black market. Uh, it feels like the black market because I'm ordering from like random places in Europe or Asia. I totally missed out on ordering the Tometru and Tohorika. I was going to get all of them for like Aww. with their canisters and with their instructions, like barely used um, all 12 oh, for nice. like 200 bucks. And I was just waiting to save up and they've all been taken now. And I just, right. what is going to happen? Like, I just think that's going to be such a hard thing to find now going forward. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I have the ones that I'm going to review already, ready to go. And I'll be able to eventually over the summer go up to Seattle just to grab everything and bring it all down. Just um, so you can have your entire collection with you? Yeah, because I'll just start reviewing from the bottom up. Just like do it all over again. <laughs> Yeah. Nostalgia city there, dude. <laughs> oh man, there better be a carpet. <laughs> there won't be a carpet. I was thinking like there better be a carpet. I was thinking like or maybe maybe in the beginning I'll like make a funny joke, but no. I don't I'm not gonna be doing the carpet thing. <laughs> I was just Dang kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't I don't think I'll be doing the carpet thing. <laughs> but that's fine, no worries there. Um CMOS, you should have a carpet as the background. <laughs> you just green screen your entire uh your entire uh studio space and then you just have a green screen carpet. Yeah, there we go. It's just the background is of um, my old carpet. I'll even pull like from and it's an just old the carpet still. of your old house. Yeah, I'll just pull an old still. <laughs> That is all gone. That stuff does no longer exist, unfortunately. Was that um, torn down or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bought, torn down. Definitely no more carpet there. It is Dang. what it is. That's what happens. Uh, yeah, I made like a short film about it because, you know, that's who I, I wanted to capture it all before it was demolished. Um, I don't think I remember it ever seeing that one, but it, I'm pretty sure it's on your channel still, isn't it? Oh, no, there's like three or four that I've never posted on YouTube. Okay. So I have that's so like many. A personal thing? No, I want to get them out there. I just want to wait till I have the following or the amount of people to watch them. Uh, but yeah, I have, yeah, I've been, I've worked on so many things in the past four or five years that I've like not posted anywhere. Uh, one, because either they were like in house, like it was like a company thing, or, you know, so it was like a music video for another artist that, of course, you know, they could post on their channel or whatever, yeah. commercial or yeah. all sorts of things. But that's eventually what I want to do, obviously, you know, now that this YouTube has been up and running again. But yeah, um, let's see. I mean, we can keep this one short if we don't have a lot of other things people are writing in. We definitely had a lot to talk about today. Um, you know, I try to do this every Thursday, but... It was my friend's birthday yesterday, and I was like, I'll just drop the video and let people know that there's a stream tomorrow. But we'll definitely be doing another one next week. I want to, like, get a lot of people's ideas and opinions going on kind of what else they would want to, what else we could even talk about. Um, I also, yeah. like, I'm still working at finding, like, what's the perfect time to do a stream? Because, like, when I first, I mean, when I first started doing these like streams just by myself like two months ago or whatever i felt like i was getting a lot more people writing in there is still the same amount of people watching just like less questions so i want to like be able to continuously like build a slate of topics and ideas so that way we can keep kind of cycling through stuff uh let me see yeah for sure let me check yeah, in yeah with... we can probably like make a, a google doc you know list off of sundry of um, topics that we can go ahead and discuss about, you know. Yeah, I have a list of a whole bunch of stuff. Like, yeah. No, yeah. Totally, totally. Um. All right. Well then. I mean, I'm good. I I probably I need to like cook dinner and do all a bunch of stuff. It's Friday. I have the weekend ahead of me. Um. But yeah. thanks to Guinness for coming on BioTube TV earlier. Thrawn, of course. We've got Geo and uh Trib right here with me, and um. Eight concurrent viewers, what's going on, guys? I think we're going to call it on this one for today, but I had a good time. I'm glad that I was able to figure Streamlabs OBS out right before we started, so hopefully these settings stay and nothing changes again, but... <laughs> 
yeah, we'll see how it goes going forward. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. CMOS, Sposenju, The Man in Black, Kumu Rocks, Cyborg Fizz, um, Chuglet, Odd Dude 21. We also had, who else did we have earlier? We had Nicholas and um, Paraka Avok, of course. You're always here, you're always listening. Yeah, it's great to have you guys. It's always uh, a pleasure. And honestly, um, you know, it's something that I think, you know, it allows us to kind of like get away from normal life for a bit. It's just to have fun talking about this. So we'll keep it up for the next one. I probably don't want to do the next one on a Friday. I'd probably do it on Thursday or again. If there's another day in the week that works for people, maybe I'll post a poll and get an idea. But I know it generally always works for us later in the week and all that. But I think we could start maybe earlier, but I, I don't know. It's with like with these videos and live streams, I've realized like fans of Bionicle are so all over the place, like internationally, that like everyone's time oh, yeah. is everyone's time is so it's just totally different. Like this will get, you know, three, four times the amount of views just from people seeing that the stream went up, um, you know, that when they're waking up, you know, five, six, seven hours from now. That's just kind of how it is. Basically. But um yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks for watching. 10 concurrent viewers. What's going on? If you are just tuning in new, go ahead and restart at the beginning of the video. I'm going to finish this. And then if you refresh, whatever, drag the cursor to the beginning, you can start the stream from the beginning. So until then, my name is uh, Kaplan. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thanks, Gio. Thanks, Trib. Um, mm. You guys want to say uh, adios to all, everyone watching? <laughs> Well, it was a pleasure, you know, to have you all, like, staying tuned <laughs> to us. And, like, always, stay awesome and happy building. <laughs> happy Follow building. Follow the light. <laughs> Follow the light. <laughs> Let it be your guide. All right. Peace. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time on the Biotalk Live, the next show, next week. See you then, guys.